Good morning, everyone. Please stand and welcome to the service of Holy Eucharist on the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. We extend a very warm welcome to those who are joining us for the first time, those who are joining us in person, and of course, our friends now joining us live via our live stream. We are happy to have you with us today. Our opening, our opening sentence comes to us from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul writes, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Let us pray. Go before us, O Lord, in this our act of worship, in our lives and in all that we do with your most gracious favor. Further us, O God, with your continual help, that in all our works having begun in you, they will continue in you and end in you, that we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our processional hymn, Blessed are the pure in heart. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Oh, let's try that again. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Good morning. Much better. It is so good to see all of you today, friends, and we extend, of course, a welcome to those who are joining us, as I've said, live via our live stream today. It is a wet day outside, but I'm happy that you were able to join us in person today as we worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh, grant, O oh, merciful God, that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, please be seated for the first reading from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, verses 1 to 3a and 6 to 15. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of King Zedekiah of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the courts of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where King Zedekiah of Judah had confined him. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalem, is going to come to you and say, Buy my field that is at Anathot, for the right of redemption by, by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hannibal came to me in the court of the guard, in accordance with the word of the Lord, and said to me, Buy my field that is at Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord, and I bought the field at Anathoth from my cousin Hannibal, and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase, containing the terms and conditions, and the open copy. I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, son of Mansiah, in the presence of my cousin Annabel in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence, I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both this sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthen ware jar, in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, please remain seated as we recite together Psalm number 91, reading from verse 1 to 6 and verse 14 to 16. Psalm 91, verse 1 to 6 and verse 14 to 16. Together we say, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. 
You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please remain seated for the second reading. A reading from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verses 6 through 19. Of course there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmless desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all of this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandments without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. There are to, they are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share. Thus, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand now for the gradual hymn, Let Saints on Earth.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. This is the Gospel of Christ. Friends, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, as you have called us to this service, and as we have gathered in your presence, make us mindful, O Lord, of the giftedness of this life that you have given us. And give us grace, Lord, day by day to hear your call to respond to you with generosity in things spiritual and things physical. We pray, O oh God, that in this time you allow us to hear your word anew, that you write it upon our hearts, that our lives are changed and transformed. May I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. It is good to see all of you today, and I pray that uh, you and your loved ones are, are well this day. I don't know if it's just me, but I hear a faint sound of a phone ringing. Uh, if that is you, please do uh, quiet that for us. Uh, friends, as we gather today, I want to share with you some words from the first letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 6, reading from verse 17 to 18. First Timothy, chapter 6, reading from verse 17 to 18. There Paul, the seasoned pastor, writes to Timothy, his protege, 
And he says to him, as for those who in the present age are rich, he says to Timothy, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. He says they are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share. A few years ago, Scotiabank launched their new slogan, You are richer than you think. You are richer than you think. I'm sure many of you have seen it. I think it was around about 2017. And as far as I can gather, the thinking behind the slogan was that although you may not have very much now in terms of cash on hand, based on your credit score or based on certain assets that you might have, you could get access to cash in ways you might never have imagined possible. Right? That is, by using their borrowing products. You could take out a mortgage. You could get a line of credit. You could take out a personal loan. And their appeal, of course, in this slogan is clearly to those who do not think that they presently have very much. To those who do not think that they have the ability or the capacity to have very much, they say to them, you know what, you are richer than you think. And of course, the underlying enticement in this kind of appeal, it goes something like this. Just think of what you could do with all that cash. All that cash you can have. You can have whatever you want to make your life a little more comfortable. You could live like the rich and the famous. You are rich. You are richer than you think. And many, no doubt, have taken advantage of this offer. Perhaps have found themselves in serious debt especially those who got variable rate mortgages prior to this present period of inflation. And so one comedian's comment on this slogan goes like this, you are richer than you think, except you, Jeff, you owe us $60,000, right? Because that is the predicament that most people find themselves in. You see, the problem with this kind of philosophy, friends, is that the desire to become rich, and indeed to spend your life's energies and efforts simply trying to get money, is a waste of time. It is a waste of your God-given life. Because it is, in essence, going after a fleeting goal. It is something that is passing away. And so writing to Timothy, Paul says to him, we brought nothing into this world so that we can take nothing out of it. Whatever you acquire, whatever you amass, you will leave behind. And so very often the pursuit of this goal leaves one open to so many other senseless and harmful temptations which leads to one's destruction. It has led many even to stray away from the faith in the living God. You see, when our desire is to become rich, we tend to be less attentive to our neighbor. We tend to be less attentive to the effect that our pursuit of riches has on our neighbor. And so a lot of times we fail to realize that, you know what, many people have been defrauded some people have been undermined, sometimes on their jobs. Some have been overlooked. Some have been pressed into service that they would not otherwise perform. Some have been sold into slavery. Some have sold themselves into a kind of slavery. Some have even been murdered, friends, all because someone wanted to become rich. 
Of course, the whole world is now beginning to see the effect of our pursuit of riches through its impact on our planet and our environment around us. Long warned about by the climate change scientists and experts, now we are beginning to see what the pursuit of wealth and of our own ends to the neglect of those around us, to the neglect of the world around us, does to us. The pursuit of riches has trained us to become consumers. We want to consume whatever it is, to buy it even if we don't need it. And we have truly begun in so many ways even to consume one another. And sadly, friends, it is the rich, it is those who often have who are the ones who consume the poor, those who do not have. Jesus' parable in today's gospel about a rich man who feasted sumptuously every day and the poor man named Lazarus who lay at his gate, it picks up on many of these same realities of the dynamics between the rich and the poor. There are lessons here, friends, about the folly of trusting in wealth and the uncertainty of wealth and about a great reversal of sorts that will take place at the end of the age when our Lord returns. But this is not simply a story about riches and poverty. It is also an object lesson, if you will, intended to make a point about certain other religious and spiritual concerns and realities of Jesus' day. Right? You'll know that throughout Jesus' earthly life and ministry among his fellow Jewish people, he displayed the great generosity of God in all that he said, in all that he did. He welcomed, and he ate with whomever was willing to hear, whoever wanted to receive, whoever wanted to respond to the word and the grace of God, he welcomed them. Usually it was the tax collectors, the prostitutes, those who were labeled as the sinners. Jesus welcomed them to his table. He touched and he healed the untouchables. He associated with the lowly. He went and found himself among the vulnerable and the weak. These were the spiritual outcasts, if you will, in Jewish society. Not unlike Lazarus in the day's parable, sitting just outside the rich man's gate, often ignored or unseen, those whom it was socially acceptable to ignore or regard as less than others. Those are the ones who Jesus found and sought. And by contrast, you had the religious leaders of Jesus' day, among them the Pharisees who loved their money. They were haughty. They would not have been caught dead attending to or associating with many of those with whom Jesus associated with and attended to. In many ways, their hope was not in God, but on their riches. They depended upon their riches. These were the ones who, friends, in a sense, feasted sumptuously every day, both physically and spiritually, on all that God had provided for them. And they did so without due regard for those right there in close proximity to them who longed to satisfy their spiritual and physical hunger, even in small measure, from the morsels which fell from these religious leaders' table that they enjoyed regularly. And so an important lesson to be drawn from this parable is that true and authentic generosity whether it is in things spiritual or whether it is in things physical, comes from the very same kind of heart. True and authentic generosity comes from the very same kind of heart, whether that is in things physical or things spiritual. Remember in the letter to James where James asked that rhetorical question? He says, does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? You remember that? 
Of course, the answer is no, it doesn't. Right? In the same way, friends, if we are not generous in things physical, then let me tell you that it is unlikely that we will be generous in things spiritual as well. And the reverse is true. If we are not generous in things spiritual, then it is unlikely that we will be generous in things physical with the material blessings with which God has entrusted us. All right, just let that sink in. The fruit of being generous, the fruit of being ready to share in things physical springs from the same heart and life that is generous and ready to share in things spiritual. That is to share with others the good news of eternal life, the good news of salvation made available to us in this Jesus Christ. And so through this parable of this rich man and Lazarus, Jesus extends to all of us the invitation to a generosity of life. That's what he's offering to each and every one of us. Manifested in things physical and in things spiritual, in response to the needs of our neighbor in our midst. And so despite how we may perceive our neighbor, despite how we may think about them, despite how we may perceive their needs, God calls us to be generous stewards of the spiritual and the physical gifts with which he has entrusted us. Because in Christ, he has opened up a future both for our neighbor and for ourselves. God is able to see a future for that other sometimes when we are not. God is able to see a future for us when we think that there's no point to this life that we live. You see, when we walk with Jesus, when we follow his example, when we go after him in this way of life, we are richer than we often think. And so there's this double warning, friends, in this parable. The first warning is that we ought not to become so caught up, so enamored with our own lives or with our own pursuits and achievements in this life that we become blinded to the work of God among us in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. God is trying to do something in each and every one of our lives to change us and transform us from the inside out. And it is so important that we don't get caught up in all these other pursuits that we can't even see it. There's a present urgency to respond now to this gracious work and call of God upon each and every one of our lives. To respond now, not later. From torment in Hades, this rich man begged Father Abraham to send Lazarus to warn his brothers who were probably after the same pursuits, destroying their lives in the pursuit of wealth. He wanted to send Lazarus so that they might not come into the same place of torment. But he was told that his brothers already had in Moses and in the prophets, that is, he already had in the scriptures all that they needed in order to respond to the grace of God. If they refused to listen to them, then a visitation beyond the grave would be no more convincing for those who refuse to repent. And friends, let me tell you, the same, the very same temptation exists today. For us to be enticed away into trying to gain the whole world, to become wealthy, to become rich, all to the devastation of our very soul. God has made us for himself. And our hearts will always be restless until we find our rest in him. Nothing will fill the void in our lives that God has placed there for him and for him alone. The second warning is that even as we have received we ought to be ever mindful and attentive and responsive to those whom God places right in our immediate proximity, to those whose paths we cross and interact with regularly. 
those whose deep hunger and thirst in this life stands to be truly satisfied if we would but offer, if we would but share out of the abundant grace and blessings which God has bestowed upon us. Sometimes we feel, oh, I can't help my neighbor because I don't have enough for myself. But when you follow God in this life, friends, you are richer than you think. Remember the widow at Zarephath? God called her to give her last to the prophet. And she did it. At the command of God, she did it. And she never ran out of oil. She never ran out of meal. You are richer than you think. And that's in things physical and spiritual. And so the question is, how can we be more attentive? How can we be more responsive to the needs of those whom God has placed in our midst? How can we be more attentive? How can we be more responsive to the operational needs of this parish as we strive to reach out to serve the physical and spiritual needs of those in this congregation and beyond? What is God calling us to do? And friends, are you doing good? Are you being rich in good works as God has equipped you to be? Are you being generous or are you holding on to what God has given you because you want to become rich? Are you ready to share all that God has given you? Or are you like the rich man, focused on your own concerns and pursuits? Friends, let me say this to you. People need the Lord. More so now than ever before. People need the Lord. And so my prayer is that God may continue to open our eyes to the needs of those around us that he may make us especially attentive and responsive to their spiritual needs. And even if perchance we feel that we don't have within us what is required in order to meet those needs, that we will at least try to facilitate it. You know what? I can't help you, but I know someone who can. Let me connect you. But may we never again pass by the needs of those around us, pretending as if we do not see. Amen. Friends, please stand. And let us now, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, confess and reaffirm the faith of our baptism in our God, who for our sake became poor, so that by his poverty we might become rich. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, please sit or kneel as you are able as we pray. In peace, let us pray to God, our creator and our provider, the one from whom all good things come. Good and gracious Lord, together we, we call, call to, to you, you our refuge. refuge. Provide your safe space to all who turn to you for help and for salvation. Together we, we call, call to you our, our fortress. fortress. Provide your strength to all who are coming to learn the depth of their weakness without you. Together, we, we call, call to you our trust. trust. Provide your vision. Give us eyes to see you, ears to hear you, and faith and courage to follow in your footsteps. We pray for those visiting with us today, whether in person or online. We are grateful that you have drawn them here today, and we pray that you will meet them wherever they may be in their journey of life and faith. Draw them to encounter you through this, our act of worship. Draw to this community of faith, children, youth, and families. Give us grace to follow you. Together, we, we call, call to you, you our, our deliverer. deliverer. Provide your promise, your holy and life-giving spirit, that we may be drawn to you and made one as you are one. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and people of the territory of the people. In the Anglican Church in Canada and in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the indigenous children who did not return home from residential school. We pray for survivors and their families, and for truth, healing, and reconciliation. In our own Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Burundi, for its bishops, clergy, and lay people. Together, we, we call, call to, to you, you our, our cover. cover. Provide your gentleness in our world, which can often seem so hard and unforgiving. We pray especially for our Saints Cafe. We pray that you will continue to strengthen and encourage our coordinator, volunteers, and all who in gentleness offer this ministry week by week. We pray for all who receive meals, support, a kind word, and Christian friendship through this program. Together, we, we call, call to you, you our faithful. faithful. Provide your presence to those who find it hard to feel you near. Draw especially near to those who are passing through illness or pain. We pray in particular for the following members of this congregation and their caregivers. Alton. Alton. Courtney. Courtney. Carol. Carol. Thelma. Thelma. Maureen. Maureen. Joe. Joe. George. George. Clifton. Clifton. Kathleen. Kathleen. Ruben. Ruben. Nellie. Nellie. Andrew. Andrew. Fran. Fran. Carmen. Carmen. Rita. Rita. Torette. Torette. Felicia. Felicia. Ian. Ian. Pat. Pat. Paul. Paul. Ethel. Ethel. Joan. Joan. Doreen. Doreen. Rima. Rima. Hyacinth. Hyacinth. Angela Gonzalez. Angela Gonzalez. Erica Martin. Erica Martin. Dorothy Maskell. Dorothy Maskell. And Pauline. And Pauline. 
We pray for those for whom members of this gathered community have asked our prayers, especially Thelma Shasto, Evelyn Greenidge, Ruth Lynn Hoyt, Iabo Ogenduran, Joyce Welcome, Eric and family, Vaughn Martin, Cindy, Joy Agard Mighty, Angela Puopolo, Eva Manifold and Germain, Valda and Sarita Domingo, Marielle, Marianne, and Valerie Walters, Alex Atu, Joseph Duru, Shanice Ashmead, Florence Umogbai, Diane Denny, Alyssa, Thomas, Latoya, Athena, and Bekwele Odom. Together, we, we call, call to you our, our shield. shield. Provide your defense to all who look to you for help. Together, we, we call, call to, to you, you our bunker. bunker. Provide your confidence that we may learn to walk by faith in you and not by sight. Together, we, we call, call to you, our protector. protector. Provide your future that our past and present may come to, to their true fruition in you. We pray especially for the people and nation of Nigeria at this time as they commemorate 62 years of independent rule on Saturday of this week. Grant them and all peoples to seek your, your future. Together, we, we call, call to you our rescuer. rescuer. Provide your breath that we may be filled with new life, that our hearts may be made pure, that we may be made completely yours. Together, we, we call, call to you our, our satisfaction. satisfaction. Provide your peace not as the world provides it, but a peace that is grounded in the truth of your life and by which we are reconciled to you. Together, we, we call, call to you our Savior. In all things and upon our humble prayers this day, provide your grace. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us therefore confess our sins confident in our Lord's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all that is good and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, please stand now for the greeting of peace. And as we greet one another with a sign of peace, I invite you to move around, uh, depending on your comfort levels, or to remain where you are and simply to greet one another from there. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. Are you ready? Let's greet. Click your YouTube comment box 
or Zoom chat. Type P E A C E and send. Friends, as we continue in this time of offertory, I would like to invite those of you who may wish to do so to come forward and to place your offering in the basket provided here at the front, uh, guided by our wardens. If you'd like to make a contribution electronically, you may do so at cw saint stephen Downsview at toronto.anglican.ca. Our offertory hymn, O God of Bethel. Friends, let us together in the words of the prayer over the gifts offer God our thanks and praise for all that we are able to offer in this Eucharistic worship and for the privilege to participate in this holy meal. We pray together, eternal God, in Jesus Christ we behold your glory. Receive the offering of your people gathered before you and open our hearts and mouths to praise your great salvation. The same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer Form 3. Eucharistic Prayer Form 3. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Friends, please sit or kneel as you are able as we pray. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. 
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body, that they may be the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Unite us, O God, to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, as we gather this morning to partake of this Holy Eucharist, Please be reminded that all baptized believers are welcome to receive at this table. Only the consecrated wafer will be administered. As you come forward, I invite you please to sanitize your hands. I will say to you the words of administration. You will then receive the wafer in your hands. Please then make your way to a sanitizing station, remove your mask, place the wafer into your mouth and then replace the mask and sanitize a second time before returning to your seats. Our communion hymns, let us break bread together, followed by learning to lean.
Friends, as we continue to sing, I invite those of you who may wish to come forward to pray for a birthday or anniversary or any other need or concern of your heart. I'd be delighted to pray with you at this time.
Friends, where you are, I invite you now to please stand and let us together in the words of the prayer after communion give God thanks for this great privilege that we have to gather in person, to gather wherever we may be for worship, and to offer our thanks and praise to participate in this holy and life-giving meal and to know his presence near. We pray together. Father in heaven, strengthen the unity of your church so that we who have been fed with holy things may fulfill your will in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Friends, please be seated. Good morning, everyone. And once again, a very warm welcome to all of you, and a uh, warm welcome especially to our friends joining us now via our live stream. We are happy to have uh, all of you with us today. Friends, as we continue into this uh, new week, uh, please uh, join us as you are able for our usual weekly offerings. We meet this evening at 6 p.m. for evening prayer on Zoom. Uh, we meet Monday through Fridays at 7.15 a.m. for morning prayer, um, a delightful gathering of prayer and song, and I encourage you to be with us as you are able uh, to do so. Uh, we have resumed our Bible study on Thursday evenings at 7.30 p.m., so please do join us uh, for that as well, also on Zoom. And I offer to you a course uh, called Christian Foundations. We are studying this course. It is uh, being followed particularly by those who are preparing now for confirmation, but it is open to the entire congregation. If you would like to join us on Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. or on Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. for one hour at a time, I invite you uh, to join us for that as well. All of these opportunities to help us to grow and to deepen in this life of faith. Friends, our Saints Cafe will continue this week, uh, Monday, tomorrow from noon to 1, and then again uh, on Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m., and we continue to pray uh, as we've done for our coordinator and all of the volunteers uh, who continue to offer this ministry week by week. A uh, very special thank you to all who were able to join us uh, last Sunday. It was a great day, a full day, uh, but a blessed day. Uh, back to church Sunday, uh, Holy Baptism. We had uh, a bake sale uh, following the service, a myriad of activities going on. Um, we, we had a junk and a rush out uh, leading us out into the, the parking lot. I see some folks who were dancing last week and not here this week, but maybe they're recovering, but that's fine. Um, but we are grateful for the participation of uh, Dr. Redwood and her team from the Black Creek Community Health Center who are here to do health checks. Um, our dental hygienists uh, through our contacts with Shalon uh, who were able to do dental assessments. I understand we had uh, more than 30 people who came and had uh, dental assessments done. So we're happy that we could offer uh, that service to the community. We had our hair braiders on hand. We had uh, our masseuses on hand. I even got a massage. It was lovely. Um, we will have them back uh, at some point as well. Um, and also special thanks uh, to you, Janet, and to your daughters uh, for hosting us at Coffee Hour uh, last week, Sunday. A very full, uh, full day, and again, thank you. This is uh, all in an effort to, to help to draw us back uh, into the space and into the life and worship uh, of this community. Uh, we have been in our own little corners uh, for a very long time, uh, but we are happy to be able to gather again, uh, especially as we head uh, into the fall. Uh, friends, please take note uh, that uh, our fundraisers are ongoing, which is also a part of our participation in the life and work of this parish. Uh, today is the deadline to turn in walkathon sheets, so if you uh, walked, if you received sponsors, uh, please be sure to return those sheets in today. Nadine is not present with us, but she has asked uh, that we turn those sheets into the wardens, and so if you have brought your sheet and your funds, uh, please see one of the wardens uh, this morning. Also, our Talents Fundraiser is ongoing. That continues up to 
uh, November the 20th. And so uh, if you'd like to continue sponsoring those who are offering their talents, uh, that is welcome. If you have a talent that you'd like to offer, uh, that is also welcome uh, as well. Uh, for those who participated in the Legacy Giving Seminar uh, a couple of Sundays back, a uh, number of persons have asked for the information packages that were available. Uh, if you did not receive them, <clears throat> they are coming. Um, Peter Mashazik from the diocese uh, shipped some this week, so we should have them uh, very early this week, uh, as well as uh, Michael Reckley, uh, who is here from IG Wealth Management. Uh, he will drop off uh, packages this week as well, so they will be available uh, from the parish office. Also, please let us know uh, by October 16th whether you will need uh, offering envelopes for 2023. The reason we are making this request is that a number of people during the past two and a half years have taken advantage of the electronic options for making their contributions to the church. Uh, if you would like to continue to receive envelopes, please let us know. Um, we do not want to, to order envelopes uh, for monetary reasons as well as uh, we're trying to conserve in terms of the paper that we use. Uh, we don't want to order those envelopes if they're not going to be used, collected, and used. So if you'd like to receive envelopes, uh, please let us know by the 16th of October. Uh, I want to encourage uh, our senior members once again. Uh, this is a project being offered, uh, facilitated rather, through the Downsview Youth uh, Covenant. It is called On the Step, Through the Eyes of the Elders. Uh, seniors are being invited to share their recipes, their favorite recipes, cultural recipes, uh, with the uh, second and third generation um, of children and youth of African descent uh, in this community. Um, so you will provide uh, not just the recipe, but sometimes there's a story that goes behind or along with some of the recipes that we have come to appreciate and to love. Uh, if you are willing to do this, if you like to cook, if you have a recipe, uh, please do let me know so that we can get you plugged in uh, with this program. The, the goal is to uh, develop a, a cookbook that has uh, these recipes, but also uh, snippets of the narrative that goes along with the recipes as a part of our handing on uh, to the next generation. All right. Friends, we want to remember and pray for, as well, those who are celebrating their birthdays uh, this week. We have a lot of birthdays this week. Uh, Rona McColeman, where's Rona? I thought I, oh, there's Rona. <laughs> Rona McColeman is celebrating her birthday along with Ricardo Walters on this Wednesday, so we I want to remember uh, Rona. Uh, Philip Alda, behind me. Philip, uh, along with Hyacinth Edgehill and Landry, uh, Williams and Johanna Lansdowne White will be celebrating on Thursday, the 29th. And so we pray God's blessings for you as well. Uh, Renee Jagdeo will be celebrating her birthday on Friday, the 30th. And Marvel Odlum, uh, along with Lynette Evans and Irene O'Mary, will be celebrating on Saturday, October the 1st. Uh, we also want to remember and pray for. Uh, Foster and Marvel will be celebrating their 49th wedding anniversary uh, also this coming Thursday. So a busy week for the Audlums as well. Uh, but we want to pray for them as they mark uh, this uh, anniversary of their wedding. And so we pray God's blessings uh, for you, for you all, as you mark uh, these milestones. Can we sing happy birthday, David, you think, to those? Yeah. Blessings for you as you celebrate this week, friends. Friends, please stand as we sing our recessional hymn, He Came Down. Please stand. Mm -hmm.
Heaven came down. Yes, heaven came down. He did come down, but heaven came down. Friends, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before you go, 
Remember to click like and leave a comment. See you next week.